What is good to the family? It's Ray J back with another video. Let me first say that I'm not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. I want to talk about Tesla's deliveries, which just came out. I'm going to break down some very important information about this and also Tesla's charts, not to mention how SPY and these other tickers are looking. Let's first talk about the numbers. They just came out about eight minutes ago, so let's break this down. When it comes to the production deliveries, there's going to be a big shout out for all the customers, employees, and etc. who did a great job. Looking at the numbers, they produced approximately 495,000 vehicles, delivered over 484,000. Uh, once again, we're seeing growth by 38% year over year to 1.81 million, while production grew 35% and year over year to 1.85 million. Here's a breakdown of the numbers. Production in total, uh, just under 495,000 thousand which is not bad whatsoever the majority were from the model threes and the model y's at 477,000. The deliveries we had 461,000 for the model three and the model y with the total for all models reaching 484,507 for all deliveries for q4 not bad whatsoever for tesla and then on top of this uh, and by the way this is meeting expectations a little bit above but it's not bad whatsoever it's just very close to them uh, and then for 2023, the overall deliveries met expectations as well. So let's start off with production right over here. Production, we have 1.78 million for the Model 3 and the Model Y. Other models were at about 71,000. And we have 1.845 million in production for all of 2023, which is very, very good. Uh, but for deliveries, this is which, what's even more important, at least when it comes to investors' eyes and Tesla's reaction. Deliveries are even more important. We had about 1.74 million uh, for the Model 3 and the Model Y. With other models, including it's just under 70,000, so putting our total at 1.8 million, about that many. So that is meeting expectations, not bad whatsoever for Tesla. But please know, guys, I do see an issue with this. I want to warn you about this, okay? Tesla did well. Big shout outs to the customers, the employees, all of the executives, everyone that, you know, played a big role in making this possible. They did amazing. Tesla's incredible. But the problem I do want to warn you about is that the media has such high standards for Tesla. So does Wall Street. The standards are so high. So sometimes they may make, they, they expect Tesla to just smash expectations. You have 1.9 million deliveries, 2 million deliveries, not 1.8 million. So sometimes it might not cause as great of a move for Tesla as it could have. And I just wanted to warn you about that. Here's another example of this. The epitome of this is just from CNBC this morning. BYD is set to beat Tesla for a second straight year after producing more than 3 million cars. Congratulations, BYD. I'm very you know proud of them as well. They, they did well technically. But why on earth do we have to constantly compare them to Tesla over and over and over again when they're in completely different circumstances? Tesla is a very different company from BYD looking at what else Tesla is doing. So... I mean, the fact that they just have to keep comparing them just, uh, you know, it, it just trivializes how great Tesla is. So don't let this stop you guys. And here's exactly why. Uh, I saw this tweet right here from this man named John. You guys could see in 2012, Tesla was only, you know, delivering about 2,000 cars. 2018, they did 200,000. 2020, 500,000. And just recently, we reached 1.8 million. So look at the extensive growth for Tesla. That's where I like to compare Tesla to. Tesla is still incredible. They're growing. They're in a, still in a massive growth phase. So please don't just look down at Tesla. I mean, I, I'm very impressed by what they're trying to do with these numbers. And we shouldn't trivialize them. Could we criticize them here and there? Yes, of course. But do not trivialize this growth. These are good numbers, 1.8 million deliveries. On top of this, I just want to call out that we have even more data right here. Uh, this Tesla Rati is basically saying that Tesla, you know, they met the guidance, which is once again, it was something that's true. Uh, for the rest of the market, now I just want to call out a couple of things. Watch for volatility 15 minutes after market open for the S&P Global Manufacturing PMI, not to mention construction spending. So 15 minutes after market open at 9.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, watch for this data, then at 10 a.m. And a couple of things to know about the market. The market's dropping a bit as we start. Oil was down about 10% for 2023 because of geopolitical issues, things involving OPEC production, oversupply, and manufacturers like that. Um, on top of all of that, you know, BYD is doing well. I'm proud of them. Tesla's also doing well, too. Please don't just look down at Tesla when comparing them. Both of the companies are doing well. They're growing very well. They have very strong futures. So I look at both of them and see massive, massive growth. And finally, I mean, you know, this is making a lot of headlines. There have been a lot of hard things going on in Japan. 
Uh, you know, my heart goes out to all the people that have been affected by this. So please keep them in your minds today. Uh, it's very hard and use this as a reminder of our privilege. If we're not going through things like this. And I just hope for the best for everyone out there. So please take care for anyone that's out there. Keep them in your minds. Things are very, very tough. Uh, that's pretty much it for um, the market news. Now let's break down the technicals for the different charts very, very quickly. So Tesla has this bullish uh, falling wedge is trying to break out, but so far it's kind of just trading sideways at this 250 area. Like I said before, I mean, Tesla's expected to just absolutely destroy expectations, not just barely meet them. And because of these high standards, that's why Tesla's not really breaking out as hard as it could have. But that's okay, guys. It still is green, and we're going to be watching to see how it goes. So we're at 250 right now. If we manage to keep breaking out, uh, you know, we could see 252 to 252.5. If that breaks 256 to 255, it's going to be our next level. If we get above that, we could get very close to 258 and then 260. Those are going to be some resistance levels. For support, watch 250. If that fails us, there's going to be 247 to 247.5. We have 244 to 245 coming next. So watch these supports very carefully. Watch resistance. Now, what can I tell you about the chart? Well, here's what I'm going to say. There is one issue for Tesla, and that is the fact that when you look at the market, Apple is sinking like a rock. Spy is sinking. It's actually looking very weak this morning. So is the QQQ. These are the things I was calling out yesterday that the market might start sinking as we enter January. That is so far happening. So it's kind of anchoring Tesla down a bit. Bit. So don't be too scared if you do see something like this affects Tesla. Uh, but for now, we're kind of trading sideways at 250. We're kind of stuck right now. Uh, it's not really doing much for now. So I'm going to be watching to see when we open. When we open, normally Tesla does see a push to the upside. So be very careful. But it isn't looking like Tesla's going to break out really hard. Like I see a massive, massive run. So watch to see a little pop and lots of like sideways price action. Make sure you watch this area. It's attempting to break out of this falling wedge. But we have to watch to see if we can try to hold 250. If we fail to hold 250, we could actually turn back down. So just be a little bit careful. If we hold above it, we have more potential for upside. So watch 250 is a key level. Tesla's kind of just stuck right there as of right now. It is attempting to break out. So watch for some high volatility in the morning and a little bit of a push by the way it's going to try to push when we open uh but once again you know that's not going to happen all day so just be a little bit careful as the day goes on and watch that 250 area for spy here's some levels so i just want to call out we had this rising wedge on spy we just got a break to the downside and look at this change in direction you used, we used to be making higher highs and higher lows now we're making lower highs and lower lows technically watch this support we have two supports that are very important for now at least for minor levels we have 472 as support and we have 471.6 ish around there where this wick is if we lose those two supports this thing is going to be coming down close to, to 470 basically then we have 468 below that technically speaking 468 is actually more important than 470 uh, but i'm not going to focus on 468 yet until we lose 470 as of right now we're still trying to hold that for resistance, make sure you watch some resistance at uh, 472.75, like around there, and watch 473 and 473.8 and then 474 as resistance levels. Right now, we're kind of stuck in the 472 is going sideways, so watch that very carefully. But we're looking bearish overall. We are favoring the bears a bit more if we look at SPY on the four-hour time frame. Uh, I was talking about this test right here. Uh, we have a long wick on the four hour time frame. We could be watching for a test of 470. If we lose that, 468 is next. We are looking a bit more bearish on the four hours. So just be a little bit careful, guys. Spy favors the bears more. If you look at the structure, I just want to warn you about that. So just be careful. QQQ as well. We are favoring the bears. You can see this big drop that has come. Watch resistance at 406. If we do break above that, our next level is going to be 406.5, then 408, followed by 410 support make sure you watch uh basically 404 if we lose uh not not just 404 404 ish then we have 404 flat if we lose the 404s 402 is coming next on the qqq we have this bearish breakout from the rising wedge and the overall the structure is looking bearish so watch this resistance at 406 and watch and see if you reject and come back down to the 404s we are looking a bit more bearish so just be a little bit careful on this as far as nvidia goes we have this blue trend line to be watching for when i zoom out of the charts don't forget about this blue trend line. It's a little hard to see, guys. I'm sorry about that. But I just want like keeping a bunch of levels just for you guys. Blue trend line right here. This is our support This line right here. Uh, so this is where NVIDIA is trying to hold up. And if we lose that, we turn more bearish. If we hold it, we're just going to continue to shuffle. So uh, we're stuck at 
493. If we lose the support, watch support at 490, followed by 488. Resistance watch 495. If that breaks, then we have 498, then 500. We have a rising wedge. We've got a break to the downside. I was calling this out yesterday, and now we're barely holding this blue trend line. I would pay very close attention to this blue trend line if we lose this and we get below 488, we would turn a bit more bearish. But that's going to be key support. Right now, NVIDIA is not officially really bearish. We're still holding support, so we'll watch and see if this holds. If we lose 488, then 485 is coming, followed by 482-ish. I just want to call out that NVIDIA is starting to drop a bit, but it's not extremely bearish until we lose the blue trend line. We're still holding support, so watch that very carefully for now and make sure you watch these levels very, very carefully. It looks like it might kind of just flirt around these levels for the time being, but it could. there's a risk of it breaking down later because of the overall market, so watch that carefully. Last but not least, okay, we have Apple. just want to call out that Apple looks bearish. It is, you know, it attempted to hold 190, but it failed. We're at four, not but four, um, sorry. Uh, 188 right now excuse me guys we're at 188 we have this head and shoulders like structure uh at 188 i'm going to be watching this resistance at 189 to 189.25 that's going to be a key resistance uh for support watch 188 if that fails us there's 186.5 and 185 as of right now we're in this shop zone this is where we tend to see lots of sideways price action right here between 188 and 189.3 we might just kind of flirt around these levels go back and forth and back and forth at least for the time being so watch them all very very carefully uh but for now you know apple is kind of just stuck around this 188 area uh we want to see this thing attempt to break try to break above uh, our support uh, that would be very, very awesome to watch this previous support between resistance. Uh, I would love to see that. But for now, I just want to note that we do favor the bears a bit. So we're just going to watch this go back and forth and back and forth. And if we lose 188, we're going to turn even more bearish and come down to 186. We do favor the bears a bit more. Uh, it's, it's trying to balance right here, but it's still it might end up failing as time goes on. So watch that very carefully. But that's pretty much it for Apple, guys. Make sure you watch these levels. Apple looks a bit more bearish, so watch support carefully. It's trying to balance right here, but it might not hold. I'm trying to break above this resistance, but it might not end up succeeding. So watch for some more downside as time goes on, and make sure you watch your levels. That's it for the video, guys. Thank you all so much for listening. Uh, Tesla's still stuck at 250, exactly 250 right now. It's just stuck, not really doing much. Uh, it tried to break out, but it's kind of struggling. So watch it very carefully. Look for a push when we open, and then we'll see how it goes. Don't forget the market could act as an anchor for Tesla. Uh, so do what you have to do, guys, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. Uh, do what you have to do, guys. Be very patient in the market like this, and I'll see you guys very soon for the next intraday update of the day. Thank you, and peace out.